Well now, how's it going everybody? Brandon here once again, and so I'm going to be getting started with another painting here. And the inspiration for this one is actually coming from a recent fishing outing that I had this past week. I was out on a local lake here, actually it's a lake um, in North Carolina close to my house. And uh, when I was out there, I started noticing some butterflies throughout the day. And, you know, nothing unusual at first, but then I got to noticing it was like the same kind of butterfly I kept seeing over and over and over. And I got to looking at it kind of closely, and I said, you know, I think those are monarchs, uh, monarch butterflies. I said, maybe these guys are going to start some kind of little mini migration. You know, monarchs are known for their migration patterns and things. So it's probably the most that I have ever personally seen out at any given point. Now it wasn't like a thick migration of monarchs like sometimes you've seen like I'll pop up a source image here of something that's, that looks more like a, a big time migration but anyway the inspiration was there I got some good photos of some fall coloration there on the lake and so I think I'm going to paint a scene here of some fall colors in the background they're gonna be a little off in the distance a little bit out of focus and then I'm going to have some monarchs flying around out there and I'm going to have a few of these butterflies appear much closer to the foreground and be in focus so um, I'm just going to kind of make it up as I go in terms of, of how many butterflies I throw in there and what kind of um, colorations in the background but I'm going to use one of my lake source uh, images for the the background essentially in terms of how I want it to look and then we will go from there. So let's check this painting out. So we have actually here a 16 by 20 canvas now with absolutely nothing on it. So we're going to change that, obviously. And what I've been doing here lately that I, that I actually like is I'm going to tone this canvas up, but I'm going to tone it with some purpose. So I'm not just going to tone the whole thing with one little color to get that uh, on the canvas. I'm going to tone it uh, almost like I'm blocking it in with what I'm going to put where but not exactly so I'm going to use my least expensive lowest grade acrylics that I've got these are master's touch um, acrylics that I have here they don't cost as much money as some of the nicer acrylics that I've got so I use these as my toning of my canvas um, semi blocking in layers and I'm going to really get crazy with it in the extent that I'm just going to glob some color directly on a big, um, I don't know what this is, three inch brush maybe. I'm just going to drop some color right on it and just start smearing it across the canvas to tone it here. But again, I'm going to do it with a little bit of intentionality. So f down here at the bottom is going to be some of the water of the lake itself. So I'm going to put that a little more of the brown green tone. And then the background up here is going to mostly be a mixture of fall foliage and trees. So there's going to be some greens and some oranges and some reds and everything going on. There'll be a little bit of sky showing through across the top. So um, I think I'll actually put the little bit of sky in first since it'll be the lightest color to deal with. And then I will start dealing with the rest of this um, blobbing in of some color. So let's throw some titanium white and some blue on this brush. And like I said, I wasn't kidding. I'm just going to straight out of the tube right onto this brush here. And I got a little bit of blue on the corner. We'll see what that gives us initially. I think I want a little more white. So, as I was saying, this is toning of a canvas with a little bit of an intentionality to it. Okay, so that finishes my initial 
toning of the canvas um, with like I said a little bit of blocking in with a purpose but now I'm going to come in with smaller brushes and actually do a blocking in layer where I fine tune this a bit. This tree line is going to get carried um, off the canvas in a lot of places so there's not going to be a whole lot of that background sky showing through there and then I will start working on some background trees and dealing with that so I'm going to touch up the skyline just a little bit and then extend the tree line up into it with a smaller brush and so that's what we're going to do next. And really all I've got going on here at this moment is I'm using a flat brush. It's a three quarter inch flat brush that I am just kind of using the corners and edges of um, to create these tree textures in the background of leaves and everything. I have moved now to a smaller brush to put in a few indications of some tree trunks and some limbs in there. And now I'm back to the flat brush where I'm basically just um, dotting these leaf textures with the edges of the brush and turning it to create the different effects. Just switching up my colors a little bit to create a little bit of a, a fall autumn looking scene here in the background. I'm adding a few little details with a liner brush here. Just some stuff along the edge of the shoreline. Okay, I'm at a point now where I'm going to detail out these trees in the background just a little bit again these are going to be kind of distant trees with the main focus being on the butterflies that are going to be getting closer to the foreground um, but i do want to maybe make a little bit of a better um, appearance that there's you know individual leaves going on back there on those trees as opposed to just the blobs that i've got going on right now again this is just a personal preference thing i mean you can certainly let that background go as is um, i'm going to detail it out a little bit though just to make myself happy. Um, I'll put a few extra little uh, indications of some limbs and twigs back in here as well. Again this is just just a personal preference just something I want to do. Um, you know if you're painting this style or doing something similar to this you obviously can tweak it however you want. So that's what I'm going to do next is add some limb and leaf detail. now that I mostly have my background trees finished I'm going to do the water underneath now and really this is just um, putting a little bit of the reflections of what's visible at that height above the, the water line down into the water itself and darkening this up a little bit with some greens and some browns to make it look like reflections so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to deal with these water reflections and really this is just creating um, some darker tones here in the water with horizontal strokes with this larger brush just to create a little bit of a reflection look to it and then I'm going in with a smaller brush here and trying to uh, basically create the reflections of the colors of the leaves that I have on the trees there. Alright, so I think I've gotten to the point now where I'm going to start dropping some of these monarch butterflies in. And at first I'm just going to put a few random little orange things that are small that are going to be off closer to the tree line that you're not really going to be able to tell what they are. But it'll make a little bit more sense once you see that there's butterflies in the foreground. So just going to put some orange things in the distance. And then I think I'm going to make some decisions on where I want some larger butterflies to be and probably sketch them in and some black maybe on the edges. And once I kind of get an idea of where I want some bigger foreground butterflies then I can go back and add in some smaller ones back in the distance. So 
let's make some decisions on where we want to put some bigger butterflies in let's say we want at least one semi larger one sitting somewhere right in here Right, so I've got five slightly larger butterflies that I'm definitely going to go in and try to do some detailing on. I'm going to put a few that are a little bit smaller than that um, scattered around that you're going to see just a tiny bit of detail in. So I think I'm going to put those in first and I will detail out my larger ones. Um, those will be the last ones that I do. So I'm going to try to put a couple of mid-sized, well I say mid-sized, slightly smaller than those that I've got sitting up there now that are going to have just a tiny tiny bit of detail and then it's visible And as I'm working now on these larger butterflies, this is just a process of adding in a little bit of that kind of a burnt orange or a rusty brown kind of color on the wing along with some of the brighter orange that shows up on the wing and fading those colors together. And then I come back in and bring in the black lines that you see create the patterns on the wings of these monarchs. And then the last finishing touch on each wing is the white specks and dots that are along the tips of the wings and along the edges of the base of the wings as well. And then on this last uh, largest butterfly, I just brought the camera in just a little bit to show you a little bit better detail of what I've got going on. So it's just the same process of adding in these orange colors, um, a little bit different values of them on different places of the wing, and then bringing in um, a liner brush to create my black lines that are um, creating those shapes that are on the wings itself. And then I add just a little bit of highlight uh, touch to it at the end just to make it a little bit um, more realistic looking in my mind on the wings itself. A little bit of shine to them after I put these white specks in along the, the wings and the body of the butterfly itself. So now that is my completed painting of my monarch migration uh, inspiration that I got up at uh, Lake Lure here near my house. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I would drop a comment if you want. Subscribe to the channel if you hadn't for new videos in the future. And until then, happy painting, everyone.